when it comes to buying tools, it can be quite expensive. So one way to go about it is buying used tools. There's all different kinds of ways to buy tools, some better than others, some more expensive than others. Uh, one of the uh, you know, most common ways to buy a tool is go out and buy it new, or either if you're looking for some sort of older cool tool in particular, buying it on eBay, but that can be pretty expensive because you're competing against the entire world, basically. So one of my favorite methods is going to flea markets, yard sales, and certain junk stores that are particularly good for different types of tools. Um, I found a huge variety of tools all the way from my metal lathe, which I purchased for only $250, and I guarantee it's over $2,000 worth of lathe and accessories, all the way down to buying screwdrivers and chisels, such as these socket chisels purchased for probably a dollar or two each. Sometimes they don't have handles, sometimes they do. If they don't, I can just turn a handle. Sometimes I find just the handle and I'll buy that and pop it in a chisel when I buy one that does not have its handle. Another thing I've bought in the past, I bought a lot of stuff, but I brought it a couple examples, was this Stanley number 12 and a half. It's a scraper plane in great restorable condition. I believe I paid 12 or 15 for it, and uh, this is something I've been wanting for a while. I've had it for a couple years and still haven't fixed it up. Really common stuff also, things like squares, I paid probably a dollar or two for this, and uh, it's in good condition. Even if it wasn't square, you can go ahead and square it up yourself. Um, but uh, other than just the prices and just going out and digging in boxes and having fun, flea markets are a great resource, a sort of a networking resource. By going out and looking for these things in particular, talking to the vendors there, telling them what you're looking for, they might have the other things that you're looking for back at their houses, and you can go make a deal on those things, say if it's a larger thing like a table saw or something. Uh, also materials like wood and, uh, and even kind of strange stuff. For example, when I went to the flea market, I had a sign taped to my chest that said wanted free honeybees, and a man ended up approaching me saying that he had honeybees in his wall in his house, and if I wanted to come get them, I could. So that is potentially something I'm going to do, and if so, I'll definitely make a video on that because that could... Uh, turn out quite funny for the viewer if it goes wrong for me. And um, so uh, I guess with that said, we're going to go ahead and just jump straight to the ride to the flea market. As you pull up to a flea market, it's a pretty exciting moment because you're seeing all the action happening and you're just eager to get in a parking spot. And this particular flea market covers about a, I'd say, size of a football field. And here's a bunch of bins of just lots of different types of hand tools, ranging from screwdrivers to brace and bits and hammers and all kinds of stuff. There was even some axes, you can see right there. So axes and sledgehammers and picks and all those gas cans. I mean, you really got everything. For me, I have a lot of this, so I'm not, you know, digging all in it. But for those of you who are really just starting to build your tool collection, I mean, this would drive you crazy seeing all this at once. You probably wouldn't have enough money to buy everything you wanted. I mean, it's just a huge range, all the way from just mechanic-type tools, sockets and things like that, to there's a box of holsters and casters. I mean, there's two hand planes in one box. I mean, if you don't have these things, this really would be nice. And that's two keyhole saws, which uh, could be used to make the taper, uh, tapering tool that I showed in my shave horse video. There's a, uh, you call it a log jack, it's sort of like a log PV with that L-shaped and then when you hinge your log over it lifts it off the ground to finish it off without running your chain into the ground. There's a steel chainsaw and a DeWalt air compressor, so it really is a full range of tools. And you can even buy different types of animals and plants, so flea markets are the way to go. Well I'm sure some of you are wondering what exactly did you get? and the answer to that is, this is the draw knife. I got it. It came with, it had two handles on it. These are just some random handles that someone had jammed on the tangs. But this particular draw knife is in, I would call it fairly rough condition. It's had a lot of uh, sharpening done to it, so it's not a ton of life left in it. Also, the tangs for the handles are kind of a uh, little bent from each other so this will be a little quick restoration job I'll probably put together a video just to use it as an example of fixing up old little small simple hand tools um, but once this is fixed up I mean for the amount that I'll probably use this particular one this will last me for the rest of my life and someone else will probably end up with it uh, 
So I'll be turning some handles for it and getting it in working condition. And this could end up being sort of my beater uh, uh, draw knife that I use on knocking bark off things and for some different rougher work where I don't risk messing up the edge on my, my nicer draw knife. Let's see, what else? This was another thing. This is a kerosene torch. You pump it up like a lantern and you can then adjust the flame coming out. What it's used for, well, it can use it for pretty much anything, but uh, what I'm going to use it for in one of its real uses is heating up this. This is a soldering iron, which might not look all that familiar to a lot of you that aren't familiar with this type, but this will be used for doing some gutter work, some galvanized gutter work, which I might put together a video showing some of the highlights of that later on. But that's a cool find. That was $10. The draw knife was 4 And then the neat find for the day was this. It's an old foot ads. This particular one, I believe, is referred to as a railroad ads. It has a really wide cutting edge at 5 inches. So this will do great for, well, pretty much anything where you're needing to flatten something out, such as a beam, when you're doing any sort of hand hewing and uh, you can see the handles really pretty straight the handles not split this is just some tape someone wrapped around it probably to make it a little smoother but the condition of this ads is extremely good and I only paid fifteen dollars for it and uh, I think a head like this you know I don't know it of course is a range but I mean I think you're at least looking at sixty five to probably eighty five dollars on eBay and I paid fifteen dollars for it and I mean you can see it really is in good condition one of the things to look for with ads is, is really looking at the back sides of them because this is where the cutting edge is and oftentimes they'll get sat on the ground like this and get really rusted and pitted on the bottom. A lot of times you can still shape out that pitting but it's nice when you get one that's this smooth. I have another ads. It's one of the ones that has the point coming off the back which is a shipbuilder's ads or a shipwright's ads and luckily they have the same size uh, same size um, taper at the top so this the handle for this one and that one will match so I'm going to be remaking a handle for this one and that one and I'll do a video on that process of getting this cutting head back this adds head back in it's uh, back in really good condition and making the handle um, so that pretty much wraps up as far as what I got this time. Sometimes I end up coming back with only a six inch ruler. Other times I've come back with piles of junk. But the point is just to get out there and do it and you really will have a great time. Um, so in closing, I'd really like to just encourage you to not ignore this option. There's no telling what you can find, especially because I'm in one part of the country, you're in another. So there's different types of tools that are used regionally, and so you could really end up with some cool stuff. Um, also, I'd like to hear what kind of stuff y'all have found in similar types of situations, yard sales, flea markets, and junk stores, whatever. And uh, so leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of things you found, what kind of prices you've paid. It'd be neat to hear about that. So I uh, guess that pretty much wraps things up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This video was produced as a direct result of a comment left by a subscriber. So don't be shy. Leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for your support.